Good afternoon, Honorable Governor of Manipur, Dr. Najma Hapulaji, all the viewers and supporters who took their time out to attend our lecture series and support the Atman River Avian. I am Dr. Ketruvayam Chitravanu Devi, representing Intellectual Forum of Northeast Manipur chapter. Intellectual Forum of Northeast IFNI was formed in the year 2016 by young dynamic people working in various fields in order to promote our race heritage and to engage in contemporary issues facing the region. IFNI has its chapter in all the states of the Northeast India. As a mark of respect and, and support to the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi's Atmanivar Avyan self reliant campaign, Intellectual Forum of Northeast Manipur chapter is organizing a lecture series on Facebook Live. This is a second series, and we will be continuing the lecture by inviting experts from policymakers, academicians, entrepreneurs, bankers, bureaucrats, etc., to name a few. To begin with, let me introduce our speaker. Our honorable speaker needs no introduction. However, just to refresh our mind, let me share a few of our contribution and engagement. Dr. Nasma Haptula, honorable governor of Manipur, hails from the prominent family of freedom fighters. She is a grand niece of the renowned scholar and eminent freedom fighter, Maulana Abul Kalam Azhar, the first education minister of independent India. She received her doctorate in Dulozi Avian Herds at a young age of 22. By training, she is a scientist and also taught at the university level. She also worked in the scientist pool of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research CSIR, Government of India. She has contributed a number of scientific and technical papers in the prestigious scientific journals published from India and abroad. She was elected to the Rajya Sabha, the upper house of parliament, in July 1980. She has the unique distinction of being elected as deputy chairperson of Rajya Sabha four times. First in January 1985, the post she held till January 1986, and later in the year 1988, 1992, and 1998 until April 2004. As the longest serving deputy chairperson of the Rajya Sabha for about 17 years, she performed the onerous duty of presiding over Rajya Sabha Upper House of Parliament. Dr. Haptula joined Bharatiya Janata Party and was elected to the Rajya Sabha in 2004 and again in 2012. She has served as a chairperson of the Standing Committee on Subordinate Legislation on 2006 and again in 2013. During the period, she was also nominated as a vice president of Bharatiya Janata Party. Considering her outstanding contribution to promote and strengthen democracies around the globe, she was nominated as honorary life president of the Interparliamentary Union IPU in the year 2002. She was conferred with the Grand Cordon of Alwal wisdom, the highest civilian decoration of Morocco, presented by the King of Morocco. Allah Lua forms the highest civilian award of Egypt by the President of Egypt, Honorable Honsi Mubarak, and the highest civilian award by the Captain Rizan of San Marino, promotion of democracy and human development. She has led numerous parliamentary delegations negotiating on the issues of vital importance. She was also interested with the task of evolve global consensus to fight the menace of terrorism. It is important to mention that soon after the terrorist attack on the Indian parliament in 2001, the then Prime Minister, Honorable Sri Atal Bihari Vaspai, gave her the responsibility in her capacity as the president of IPU to lead a big all party delegation to Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Jordan, United Arab Emirates, UAE, and Sudan, carrying his message to the heads of this nation to sensitize them about the growing danger of terrorism and to combine the efforts to fight against it. During her stint as the Union Minister of Minority Affairs from 26 May 2014 to 12 July 2016, Dr. Habtula taking into account the promises made by the party in its election manifesto in 2014 for the minorities took numerous initiatives such as USAP, upgrading the skills and training in traditional art and craft for development, Naimanjil for empowering the skill of school dropout, skilling of madrasa children under Maulana Azad National Academy for Skill, Manas, and Hamari Darohar to help preserve the rich culture and heritage 
of the minorities under the overall concept of Indian culture. Dr. Heptula is also a prolific writer. India's progress in science and technology, continuity and change, 1986, Indo-West Asian relations, the Nehru era, 1991, reforms for women, future option, 1992, environment protection in developing countries, 1993, AIDS approaches to prevention and democracies, the global perspective, 2004, are some of the widely read book authored by Dr. Nasma Heptula. Besides, she was also the editor of the Indo-Soviet women's quarterly magazine, Hamari Ghosti, now known as Dialogue Today. The magazine was started in 1985 with the visit of Mistress Raisa Gorazeva, the first woman astronaut, Ms. Valentina Tereskova, was the editor-in-chief of the recent edition. Now, I invite Honorable Governor of Manipur, Dr. Nasma Hapulaji, to deliver the lecture, Role of Women in Atma Nivarvara. Madam, please. Thank you, Dr. Chitrapano. I'm indeed very happy to have an opportunity for sharing my views in the lecture series organized by the Intellectual Forum of Northeast Manipur chapter on Atmanirbhar Abhinam and the role of women in Atmanirbhar Bharat today. Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, or Self-Land India Mission, which is a vision of making India a self-land nation, was announced by Sri Narendra Modi Ji, Honorable Prime Minister, in trying time of coronavirus, popularly known as COVID-19 pandemic on 12th May this year. This announcement was heartily welcomed by one and all of our country. When I assumed the office of the governor of Manipur in the month of August 2016, I collected information pertaining to the atrocities against women in the state. I was really shocked to hear the news of atrocities like molesting gang rape, sexual assault, etc. in the state. In such a tiny and beautiful state, coupled with rich cultural heritage, I'd never expected that these crimes will happen here. However, I'm indeed amazed to learn that these atrocities and heinous crimes against women and children have been considerably aging during the last couple of years. The credit, I must say, goes to the Women's Organization and Association. With unfitting support of the general public, concerned government agency, etc. I'm fully confident that the forum will leave no stone unturned to endeavor for the welfare of the women in Manipur so that Atta Nirbhar Bharat will be meaningful. Women's market, popularly known as Ema Ketal or Ema Market, manned by women only, are mostly below poverty line. 5,000 women work under one roof, and it is the world's largest women's market. Most of the women in the market are unable to run their small business in due scarcity of money, and they borrow money from private money lenders with a high rate of interest. Therefore, in case Atma Deva Bharati scheme is extended to these Manipuri vendors, with very low interest rate coupled with some portion as grant, it will certainly be a great boom to those unfortunate mothers. I am strongly believe that the forum will certainly look into this. In spite of all these burdens, the role of women of Manipur in the society is really commendable. I wholeheartedly appreciate the women 
of manipulation. As you are well aware that the government has declared for an inclusive and extensive coverage within micro, small and medium enterprises, MEMES, boosting scope for private participation in numerous sectors, etc. Here I mentioned something about Manipuri handloom products and handicrafts. Manipuri handloom products and handicrafts is a household industry. In this industry, the female participation is spectacular, but it is important to know that the portion of population engaged in the household industry decreased by 50%. This is mainly due to the reason that less profit occurs in the household and room industry. However, it is quite fascinating to learn the recently state government has initiated to introduce a system to use handloom cloth in the educational institution and government offices, etc. It is indeed a positive step, step of the state government and the people of the state, I hope, will welcome this state. Considerable importance has to be laid on this sector as the benefit from this industry should it go almost every household in Manipur. Manipuri women are known for their skill in handloom and handicraft work. Meanwhile, unfortunately, due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic and the life of every section of the society, has impacted badly, especially the poor, daily earners, and women at large. The economic impact of this crisis is huge and has its hit every sector in a big way. It has already been affected the economic activities throughout the nation in general and the state of Manipur in particular. In addition, lockdown in the state has also been continuing for the last more than four months since middle part of March this year, and women are the silent sufferers. In Manipur, women play a vital role and are the backbone of society in shaping our society. The economic empowerment of women is the most viable solution to integrate women to the development and goal of the nation and Atmanirbhar Bharat, therefore. Atmanirbhar Bharat, self-reliant India, has an important role to play in women's life. Organization of such a lecture lecture series by the Intellectual Forum of the Northeast Manipur chapter at this juncture, a very critical juncture, is quite praiseworthy, and I wish the forum all success. In your future endeavors for the welfare of the women of the country in general and the Northeast state of India in particular. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I'm sure our participants enjoyed the imagining lecture. Thank you once again, Honorable Governor, for the informative lecture. It was a pleasure to have you with us. I also thank the team, members of the Intellectual Forum of Norris, member of our mobilization committee, who has been helping us in reaching out the lecture to the different stakeholders in the region. Lastly, with the permission of the Honorable Governor, we conclude our today's lecture series. Thank you all.